Hey, this is Noah Castilla. I wasn't planning on doing Hacky Easter this year, uh, but a friend reached out to me and asked for help with this challenge called Jason. And uh, it ended up being a JQ injection challenge, and I had so much fun solving it. Uh, I actually solved the first six levels of uh, Hacky Easter this year, trying to get to the point where I could put this flag in. Uh, it was actually in level eight, so I didn't get to it, but uh, I had a good time doing it. So I might make a few videos showing some of the interesting Hacky Easter challenges. Uh, these are live. Uh, the event is over, but you can go to the site for the month after the event, so about three more weeks at this point, to play with the challenges if you want. Um, you can also just grab the netcat string out of this video and play with it yourself. So um, it's some JQ injection. It's a lot of fun. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so taking a look at this challenge, we are in level eight, um, only 28 solves. Uh, so it's called Jason. It says Jason has implemented an information service. He's hidden a flag in it. Can you find it? Uh, connect to the server, and they give us a netcat connection string here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look, Sue. Um, I'm going to connect here using RL wrap, um, and this is just going to give me um, up arrow capabilities, really, and the ability to use my arrow keys. Um, I can show real quick if I do don't connect with this. Uh, I can type some stuff, and then if I hit up arrow, you know, I, I get that thing. If I type some stuff and then I want to go back, I can't do that with my left arrow. Um, so just not my favorite. So if I do uh, RL wrap and I connect now, if I do some stuff and I push up arrow, I get that stuff back. I can come through and edit it, etc. So it just gives me a little bit more quality of life in my terminal. Um, anyway, back to the challenge. Um, Hi, I'm Jason. Tell me what you want to know about me. Enter street or name, surname, street, city, country. So we can do that. Um, surname, street, city, country. Nothing super exciting going on here. Um, so I'm starting to think like, okay, how can we fuzz this a little bit? See if we can break it. So like, is there a command injection? Can I do that? Uh, invalid input. Um, just what about just that? Yeah, still nothing. Um, maybe some SQL injection. So like, uh, Union select one. No, maybe with some things there. No. Um, what else could I try? Maybe some like some sort of um, bash command injection like that. Still something went wrong. Um, I might just start putting in like random uh, special characters. And, and when I get to dot, that's an interesting one. I get a result. And everything else was something went wrong or invalid input. Um, but here I get result of that. I should also keep in mind, I know this is, um, the title of this challenge is JSON, which is a tricky thing for JSON, right? Like JSON. Um, so that's like worth keeping in our mind as well. And that looks actually pretty familiar to me. Um, so that right there is actually enough um, for me to have an idea of what we might be working with. But another thing that, you know, I try eventually maybe is square bracket, or I could try putting double square brackets um, and I get JSON. Um, now that's interesting. Why did double square brackets give me JSON? Um, we're gonna jump down now to a terminal window uh, I've actually got, um, I basically kind of tried to recreate what the JSON there looks like. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. So basically this is just, if we think this is the JSON that they are dealing with, right? Name, surname, city, et cetera. There's probably something else in there if there is, but like, um, that's what we know right now. And so if we are piping this into the JQ tool, um, it's going to print like this. And so when I do JQ, uh, dot name, it's going to print JSON. And that's exactly what I get back here. I see when I put in name, I get back result. I get this string JSON in quotes, just like this. Um, now there's a lot of things could produce that, right? So it's not like that convincing, right? So what if we say, well, what happens if we put a dot here? Um, my assumption right now, the way you select things in JSON is you do dot and then the thing you're selecting. So my assumption is it's taking, it's basically got all of this right here and it's waiting for my input is put right here before the last closing single quote. And so if that's the truth, then if I put another dot here, what happens? Well, we get thing kind of prints twice, once as a full JSON and then once just all the values. Now that's interesting. Um, I only got back when I put dot, when I put dot, I got right here, just this top line. And so it seems like I'm only getting the first line of my JSON, of my JQ output. Um, and so the question is then like, how can I start to figure out and enumerate these keys? Um, there's a bunch of different ways to solve this. Um, as is often the case, I actually overcomplicated this at first based on some bad assumptions. And my bad assumption was I had tried putting in pipe and I get invalid input. And I was trying to do pipe like into uh, keys, for example, and I get invalid input. I thought, oh, I'm not allowed to start with the pipe. And so we're going to work off that assumption and then we're going to correct it later because there's a way around that. Um, so I started thinking like, what, what can I do in JQ that doesn't 
um, start with a pipe where I want to get the whole thing? And the answer I got was I can do as X uh, down here and save all of it as a variable. And then I can pipe, I can then use X and pipe and then print X and I get this. Now, all I've done effectively here is reprint the whole thing, but by my theory, if I do space oops, as dollar sign X to save in a variable and then dollar sign X, I should get a curly brace and I do. So that's useful because now, now that I have X, I can pipe all of X into this thing called keys and keys is going to return me the list of the keys. And so I can do that and I get square bracket again, not useful, but I'm getting closer, right? Cause now I've got my keys here. So how can I access these keys? Well, if I want to access these keys, I can behind my computer thing here. Let's see. Uh, I can actually access them by index here. So I can do keys zero. Um, so let's try that up here. If I do key zero, I get city. Uh, and so now I can actually start to loop through. I can see city, country, um, covert. That's certainly interesting. Um, we'll just finish through these keys and make sure name, uh, street, surname. Is, I think that's all. Okay, so we found it. We found covert. So if we do dot covert, are we done? No, something went wrong. Um, oh, we don't need the dot there. Let's try that covert, and we get something. So covert has keys as well. But now, we, now this is easy at this point, right? We can just do keys. Uh, well, we can't do keys. We can do keys zero, uh, and key zero is flag. So uh, we can get the flag covert dot flag just like that, and we get the flag. Um, now it turns out my assumption as soon as I started. Thinking about this, my assumption of I can't have start with a pipe um, was just not right because if I put a space in a pipe, um, that's obviously gonna be something went wrong. But if I then do like a dot here, so pipe into itself, I, it, it's working again, right? Um, and so once I can do that, I can just do keys. <laughs> uh, you see, I get my square bracket there, so I can do my same thing here, and I can see that keys two is that and get covert. Um, so I, I overcomplicated it with the variable, but I thought that was an interesting piece of understanding JQ that might be worth showing anyway. Um, so, you know, once I have, once I have this covert here, uh, you know, again, it's done. Um, as I was prepping to make this video, I thought, huh, I, there's gotta be a way to do this where I just print the whole thing on one line. And eventually I was sort of just thinking around, looking through the JQ docs and I found uh, two string. And so really the simplest answer here is you just do two string. And we get the entire JSON blob right here. And we can see, so it's got, you know, it's converted to a string. So all of the quote marks inside of it are escaped. Um, but we have name JSON and surname, et cetera. And then here we have covert, which points to another uh, dictionary kind of object, which has the key flag and the flag itself. So um, I love JQ. It's a useful, useful tool if you're ever dealing with uh, large volumes of JSON data and you can slice through it super quickly. So um, I just, this, I love this challenge and it's what uh, kind of got me into playing Hacky Easter this year. So uh, appreciate you hanging out with me today. I hope you learned something about JQ and uh, I'll talk to you next time.